welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing last week's Gap Options newsletter trades. I'm, I'm going over the beginner risk for this video because I want people to see that you can take trades with a smaller risk. I'll do the advanced risk video in another, another PowerPoint, but I wanna just go over the trades from last week. Now, last week was sort of a busy week. I mean, there's been weeks where we've done more trades than last week. Definitely wasn't a slow week, all right? You never know if you're gonna get a busy week or not. Now, I will say in earnings season, I can pretty much you know, prepare myself that I'm gonna be doing a lot of trades in the height of earnings season. We have one more earnings season this calendar year, and it's just around the corner. I mean, this year has just flown by. I can't even believe today's the first day of September, but it is. We only have four more months left in 2022. But in earnings season, it's very busy. It wasn't earnings season last week. We just, we just had the volatility. We had the market, we had some nice trades. So let's go over them. The win ratio was 90%, perfect. We had one loser. And the return on investment on average for these 10 trades, and I included the one loser because it was 0%. So this is an average of the 10 trades of this week expiring August 26, 119% ROI. Now I will say we usually do the weeklies. Okay, so this is the Gap Options newsletter. If you wanna sign up, it's a subscription service that you would sign up for and you would choose your risk per trade. That is something that you were gonna to have to decide and it obviously is based on how what the size of your cash account is. Uh, it is a subscription service and it's not a class. You get the trades emailed to you live in a newsletter. And if you wanna ask me what I think about your risk, you can feel free to do that. You can call me on the phone. We're usually doing the weekly. Sometimes I'll do one out for two weeks. We're not doing really long, long-term options. That's something I might consider in the future. For now, this is really momentum trading. And again, I'm using my Golden Gap 26-point rating system in order to make the picks. So beginner risk profits for this week was last week, a 26 expiration was $12,585 with an average risk of 1000 thousand dollars per trade so you can always watch me on tv i'm on tv a lot <laughs> a lot every single week i'm on lots of different networks actually now and if you have questions you can always email me at melissa the you can call me at 929 3200 gap you can follow me on twitter facebook youtube or skype so everything i do is about one strategy it's a strategy i created called the golden gap I use that strategy to make option picks, day trade picks, and it really is a very, very good system. I've been doing it now. Well, I started trading in 2008, but it took me three years to develop the system that I now teach. When I started out, I never thought I'd actually be teaching people, but it all worked out. But it took me three years to calculate and figure out all of the points and do everything that I do now. And again, now I've been trading for 14 years. So it's it's been a long time. And again, I only do gaps. It is always about the right pick. I only trade gaps. Gaps are very powerful. And I also find that I have an edge trading gaps. Why? A lot of people do not understand gaps, do not know how to trade them, and absolutely trade them incorrectly. They're very powerful and you get a big moves with gaps too. And also I do have a niche in the sense that I like to short. So I veer to the short side first, always. Doesn't mean I don't go long. We sometimes go long. This is a newsletter that includes puts and calls. But I, you know, I find that shorting gives me really an advantage in the market. Why? A lot of retail traders, again, do not know how to short, don't understand how to short, and don't pick the right shorts. So let's go over this week. Win ratio was 90%. Nine winners, zero break even, and one loser. There were 10 trades called. This is for the expiration of 826. I'm using an average risk here of 1,000. This is not an exact science. You can't risk 5,000 if your risk is supposed to be 1,000 and your risk should be consistent in every trade or close to it. Profits for this particular week with an average risk of that would be 12,585. We will go over these here. Average return on investment, 119%. Like I said, I did include the one that lost at zero. So this is this particular week. And again, I focus on the weekly. So this is what you get. You get the trade email to you. Usually they're in the pre-market in the morning. Sometimes I call some during the day or later in the morning, but usually they're all sent out before the open. So you can get organized. What do you want to do? I called the Walmart 138 calls 
This was 826 expiration. Again, this was on Tuesday the 16th. Okay, let's look at the chart actually first. I'm gonna bring this up. Let's go back and look at this here. Walmart. Oh, here it was. So I called this in the morning on the 16th and then had the move, boom. Here's the move it had, ran up almost to 143 on 817. So again, this was an expiration of 826. So this one was not expensive. I thought it was a pretty good price. Cost was 260, four contracts with a risk of 1040. You could have sold it for five, profit $960, you're in and out. You would have done it on the 16th, exited on the 17th. How do you know when to get out? First of all, I do give targets in the letter. But second of all, you can put an order out to sell you at something if you want. You can just put an order out to sell you everything at 50% if you want. You know, my goal is try to get something to 100 if I can, but I do have numbered targets on the chart. And also, the goal is to get momentum. That's really the goal in every trade. So you really want to try to stay with the trade until it gets what I call a move or momentum. Sometimes trades go the same day I call them. Some takes to take a little bit of time. Return on investment in this was 92%. Again, this was a nice one. Very reasonably priced too. So that was the 138 calls. Then on that same, no, it was the same week, yeah. Next day, 817, I called the expiration for Target. I called the 175 puts. This expired on the 26th as well. This one took a bit. Let's look at it, 817 target yeah i remember this one now <laughs> there so again i called a put in this and i called the 175s here you go get the drop boom so this worked it was really something that I expected to go bigger. I guess it was the word I'm trying to say. Like I expected it to go bigger faster. It did go big, but I expected it to go quicker. <laughs> you know, if you look at that chart, you're like, you kind of, kind of scratch your head and say, wait a minute, where was the earnings? Because this was earnings. So it was one of those ones where you really had to look hard for it. But we got it. Cost was five dollars, two contracts, risk was a thousand, sold at thirteen. Nice trade. So if you risk a thousand dollars, you could have made sixteen hundred dollars. It this did take a couple of days. Return on investment 160%. So you say, well, you could have you were up in this before the 23rd. That's true. Again, you can watch something, but once it's so far past the strike, I'm just gonna go over this here, and if you have the market with you. Again, here's 175. Here was the day, got the drop. Once you're so far past the strike, do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, you can watch it, but it's rare that it's gonna turn against you in some massive way if you're deep in the money, deep in the money in this, which which this was, once it hit under 170, it was a goner. And that, that actually had a nice push with the market. So that was a put. Then we did the QQQs, sent this out again, a little bit after the open. Wednesday, 817, 327 puts, expired again on 826. This cost $4, three contracts, risk was 1,200, sold at 13. Profit, 2,700, return on investment, 225%. This one, again, was a market, e the Qs in the market ETF, sometimes we do the market. We don't always do the market every week, but I do watch the market every day. I mean, and then sometimes I'm calling a round of trades with the market and also the market itself. There we've had volatility in the market, so it's been well worthwhile to do. So let's go back to this day of this trade, which was here. This is a really nice call. There it is. And you could have got out, you could have got out any, anywhere in here. Again, you're not always going to get the low of the day exit in a short, and you're not always going to get the high of the day exit in a long. In fact, there's trades that I call this particular wink, which we're not going over today. I mean, you could have made so much more than even 
if you held them longer. You just, you have to pick and choose. Your goal is to make money. I mean, you do the best you can. You do the best you can. So again, that was a nice move. Nice drop off there. Great call because we were in it so early. I saw that we were gonna make the move so early and we did it. Beautiful call. Just one of these things where I call, you can't screw this up. If you did the trade, you made money, period. QQQ's 325s, then I called on Friday the 19th. Again, I called this in the pre-market. You do not take the trade in the pre-market because it's an option you can't. You, 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 well, you can take the Q's actually 10 minutes before the open or an exit them 10 minutes after the open, uh, after the close. I wouldn't suggest that. I'd wait till 9.30. But you can't take it in 9.05. You're getting organized at 9.05 for what you want to do and your position sizing and, you know, where are you going to get out of it? If you're going to watch it, you watch the chart. Everything I do is based on technical analysis. You can watch the chart, you can watch the targets. Again, the targets are in the letter. Or you put, if you can, if you're busy, if you're working, which is one of the reasons why people love options is sometimes they're at work. Just put a sell order. If you pay a dollar, put a sell order at a buck fifty, Or put it at two. You know, it's a day order. It's a cancel order. If it doesn't fill you, then you're still in it. And if it does, you're out. You don't have to sit and watch it, watch it, watch it. So let's look at this. This was the 325s. This was a nice day. So here, called the 325s, got the drop. Again, could have got out of here, could have got out of here, could have got out of here. And you know what was so crazy, talking about low of the day exits? Let's just look at this now. I didn't go back and see what these were worth. So the low on the very last day of expiration, which was 826, you could have said this about every one of these that I called. Actually, let's look at Target. Where was Target that day? That wasn't much more through. Yeah. See this? Low of the day, the last day of expiration, and I'm not telling anyone you have to hold something to there. I mean, it would be ridiculous to do that because this was up so nicely. But look at that. Both of these. That was $20 in the money. This would have been worth more. This would have this trade here would have been more, worth more with an exit of 826. And this trade here would have been worth more with an exit of 826. That's crazy. I didn't go back and look, but I know, I know, because I know how these things are priced. $4 was the cost for this one. Three contracts, risk of 1200 sold at 11 profit 2100 return on investment 175%. Beautiful, beautiful trade. Again, could have got out of it early, could have held it, could have held it an average time like this, just make money. That's your whole goal. And really, if you want to, you could split it up. I don't do that, but you could. Because if I'm looking at something to focus on something, then I'm focused on it. So I don't want to half focus on it. But I mean, you could take four or something, exit two, hold two. You know, there's another idea. Then the spy I called on Friday in the morning too. This was another fabulous call. Called the 420 puts. It expired in 826 on the 19th. Just beautiful prediction here. Where did this cost? Two for this was so cheap. Five contracts. Risk was twelve hundred. Sold at eight fifty. Two hundred fifty four percent return on investment and three thousand fifty profit. So this was the four twenties. Again, this was another one. Very, very, very similar in the sense that called the four twenties. Fell, fell, fell. Could have had the best exit on the last day, which is insane. Look at this, 405. So that would have been $15 in the money. Would have been worth more. You know, you can't, you, your goal, my goal, okay, my goal, my personal goal, one is to make money. I'm very focused on that, which is why it's good to trade with me. Two, I always want to get the right pick. And three, I want to get not only the right pick, meaning get the direction right, but the one that's going to have a big move. I'm very focused on that because that's how you're going to make the money. You're going to make the money when you get a big move, whether you take a small size or a big size. And then we did BA, 165 puts again, called this a little bit after the open Friday, 941 it was sent out. Here we go. And again, nice one fell. You could have staggered this one. 350 was a cost, three contracts, risk 1050, sold at 725, 107% return on investment. 
took a couple of days, you could have got out of it the 19th though, 1,125. So 165, let's take a look at BA on that day. Again, this was all the 19th, all the Friday day. Yeah, fell through the strike here, gap down here. This is one of the things here. This was, yeah, this was a good exit. Just looking, where did this go, the 26th? Yeah, this was probably, this probably actually, this day probably was the best, best exit on this now that I'm looking at this here. I don't even know why that rallied there. But anyways, getting back to what happened from here to here, we didn't really go over this, but this was Friday, this was Monday. One of the things that makes it very beneficial to be on my options newsletter is I'm very good at predicting directional moves up and down. And the, a lot of the profit from a lot of the trades in the newsletter, if you decide to join and sign up and become active, is from capturing the overnight moves where you're already in the position. So you're in a put, it gaps down in your favor. You're in a call, it gaps up in your favor. Those are hugely profitable trades that happen here. And it's it happens a lot because I really know what I'm doing. But in the sense that people want to learn how I'm figuring this out, that that's gonna happen, how something's gonna follow through, because things don't always follow through. They just don't, you know. I mean, you could look today here at the market, the market gapped down today and we reversed. So things do not always follow through in the gap down or the gap up. But anyways, it's it's a benefit of being in the letter because I'm really good at calling trades. You get the advantage of getting these big return on investments by being in them when the move happens and it goes through the strike and gaps into it. That is what happened here from 18, from the 819 day to 822 day. That was really good. Okay, so that was BA. Then we did another Q, it was Monday. Beautiful. 935, QQQ 315, 826 expiration, three dollars for one, four was 1200 risk, sold 625, profit 1300, return on investment 108%. You're in, you're out. Oops, let me go back and look at the cues before we go over the next one. 822. Which one did we do? The 315. Yeah, we did the 315s. Um, here. Showing up on like 318.50, called the 315s. Dropped through, fell into it. Could I get out here? Could I get out here? Could I get out here? Could have held it all the way into here. So this one was down around 307.35. This one, again, I decided to hold one of these ones. The previous ones, like I said, you could stack them. You could stack them or stagger them. Divide up your positions or do a couple different strikes, get out of a couple that are up and hold a couple. I chose to hold this because again, it was so far through the strike that I figured, well, I'm not gonna, I just figured I wasn't gonna lose in this, holding it. I mean, that's where I was at with it. So it was a nice trade, but I had gotten out of other ones previously. And, and I still think that was the right thing to do, even though they were going to be up more the last day too. I figured it was worthwhile holding something. Then we did the Netflix, the 225 puts that expired on the 26th, called this on Monday. This one did not work. This was a bust. The cost was 420. If you risked 1260, you would have lost a partial. It wasn't a total loss. But this ran into the last day, even though it fell like everything else. In fact, let's look at the chart. It didn't work right. I don't know why this didn't work right. It just didn't. And this is the one loser that we had. So that was here. Even though it got through the strike, it just wasn't enough for me to get out. Didn't get any traction the next day here. Theoretically, you could have got out of this with money either one of these days, but I didn't. And then the last day, it ran out of time. Yes, it was through the strike, but the cost ate up the value and it wasn't enough this would have if this had gone like to 220 221 220 220 probably it would have been worth something so this was the loser for the week and then we did the 415 spies i called monday at 9 40. again nice call this one i did get out of i was up over 50 percent. i just booked it and you could have again too. 333 contracts, 990 risk, sold at five. But if you held this into the last day, it was worth more. So you again, you could do here's another idea. 
You could do one Q, one SPY trade, however much size you take. You say you want to get a market move. You know the market's going to fall. I knew the market was going to fall last week. You could hold one, get out of one. You know, then 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 you you made some profit on the one, and it gives you something else if we get the bigger move that you can squeeze some more out of it. Let's look at where this really went. It's a 415s again. It was here, I called it. Drop for the strike there. And then we ended up 405. Yep. That would have been a lot, worth a lot more there the last day. It's crazy how that happens, but it does. It does. And it's so good. <laughs> Then the last one we did was the Amazon 134s. It expired on the 26th, called on Monday, 10.03. 250 was the price for contracts. Risk was 1,000, sold at three. It was a little profit. This didn't get the momentum I wanted either, but it was a profitable trade. We can take a look at this one too. Again, this was on Monday. This finally went. It was on Monday, fell on the last day. It was, it was profitable. It just, it actually took, it needed this week. I'm seeing that here now. I kind of didn't look at this past this week. So, in fact, doing this for two weeks probably would have paid off a lot more. So that was a week. If you'd like to sign up for the Gap Options annual newsletter subscription, it's a 12-month subscription. There are no monthly subscriptions. The annual subscription is $69.99. Each and every one of these trades that I'm showing in here, you would have received if you have been on the newsletter. Trades are emailed to you. Again, no trials, no monthly subscription. I have an annual subscription or a half annual subscription. If you want to sign up, that's, there's a lot of trades in six months and 12 months too. If you'd like to sign up, email me at melissathestockswish.com. The half annual subscription is $49.99. Again, trades are emailed to you. You can email me if you'd like to sign up for this. So it depends what fits your budget, quite frankly. If you can afford the $69.99, it's a better value. 12 months is a long time in the letter. And again, for this particular week, I'm just gonna go back to the stats here. We had one loser. I mean, one. And again, 10 trades. Now you may say, well, that's a lot. If you don't wanna do all 10 trades, don't do all 10 trades. So do what you can afford. But this is an average risk of 1,000. Some were slightly more. You have to look at the contract price all of these would have fit the parameters for around that risk though we didn't do any crazy expensive ones this past week and again you could have actually made more than twelve thousand five hundred eighty five dollars because of some of those trades if you had held into the big sell-off into the friday on august 26 you would have made more money it's still a spectacular return on investment now if you want to learn how i'm calling the trades you want to know how i do it and I think education is important. I continue to remind people that even though people really just like to trade and make money. The reason I'm good at what I do is because I know how to do it. That's why. And I've been doing it for a long time. And I don't do anything else. So I go through a checklist every morning. The process is I get up in the morning and I rate the gap using the checklist. You must do the class to learn this system. You can watch every video of the 3,000 videos I have on YouTube <laughs> going back 10 years, you will not know anything about this without taking the class. It is hands down worth the money. It's a system you can use for the rest of your life. I've been trading gaps and mostly shorting in bullish markets and bearish markets now. I've been trading that long. We do things that are selective against the market or with the market. Depends what I like, depends how the gap rates. We have done trades in the market like you saw this week when the volatility is there. And again, we don't always do pets in the newsletter. We do calls too. It just so happens. Again, we did the we did the Walmart call, but you know, it just so happens the setups were there to go short in the last. One. If you would like to learn the method how I call all the option trades, and if you want to join the room because you must take the Golden Gap course to join the live trading room, you would take the Golden Gap class. So the next course is September 17th and 18th. 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $69.99. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. And the Golden Gap combo includes the Golden Gap course and Trends course. The Trends is September 20th, 11 to 3. The combo class tuition is $74.99, which is good because it gives you two classes and you save $500. And the Trends course is really good, to be honest with you, for options trading, for learning long-term trends. But if you want to learn the rating system, how I make the picks, you got to do the Golden Gap course. 
The class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com if you want to sign up. Don't miss out on another great week like we had last week and this week too. Really looking forward to the last four months of 2022. Have a great day, everyone.